Hi everybody, I'm Dave H. at Dractio.org. In this series of videos showing you about Jambones, you've seen me build applications using Node-RED, but I haven't gone into any detail and showed you how to do that. That's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to show you how to build your webhook applications using Node-RED, a graphical drag-and-drop environment that's a great open source project. Now, Jambones is a webhook-based language, so you can use any application server of your choice. You don't need to use Node-RED. However, it's a pretty nice little drag-and-drop environment, so I've gone ahead and built some nodes into Node-RED to support Jambones, and I think it'll be a quick way for you to get up and running building applications. So let's take a look at it. Now, to begin, you're going to need to spin up a Node-RED server to host your applications. I'm not going to go through how to do that. It's all documented really well on the Node-RED website. If you go under documentation getting started, there's plenty of docs to show you how to run a Node-RED server on the hosted infrastructure of your choice. Once you do get the server running, and I've got a, a, a new Node-RED server I just spun up here, what you want to do is add the Jambones support to it, add the Jambones node. So go from the menu Manage Palette, go under Install, search for Jambones, and just click to install the latest plugin. And that will install the Jambones nodes. It'll add them to the palette on the left-hand side here, uh, down at the bottom. And you can see the layout is we've got things we can drag and drop into a what they call a flow document um, that is actually our application. So looking at the different nodes, I'll just talk briefly about all of them. We've got webhook in and webhook out. This is a webhook-based language, so everything starts with a webhook in where you'll define the path and whether it's a get or a post, and then you'll do some stuff, and then you'll have webhook out, which sends an application back to the Jambone server. Skipping over a couple of the other ones, I want to focus right now on these gray nodes, conference, DQ, dial. These are all the verbs. So these are the things that you would sort of drag and, and drop out. You might say we're going to say something, um, then we're going to dial, et cetera, et cetera. You're going to sort of put a call flow together that then gets returned. Each of these verbs corresponds to the verbs in the language itself, and if you go to docs.jambones.org, you will get detail on every one of them. For instance, here's the dial verb with an example of the JSON format. This is the text that actually gets sent back from Node-RED. Um, some examples, and then down below, a description of all the properties. Also, when your webhook gets called, a bunch of information gets sent. So you're going to get things like identifiers for the call, the application, the calling party number, the called party number. In fact, the entire SIP message, if you want it, will be there if you uh, um, have a post for your callback. Going back to Node-RED, when, if we look at the webhook in, and the info on that, you can see that all that information that comes in will be put in a message.call property, so a call property on the message object. So Node-RED has this predefined concept of a message within this flow that's getting passed around. It starts as the actual HTTP request with a property called payload, which has everything coming in. And the webhook in kind of takes all that information, reformats it, puts it into a message.call object that you'll be able to refer to. That's for everything except for a user authentication webhook. That's a little different, and there the property is called auth request. We'll look at that shortly. Okay, those are the verbs. The couple things I skipped over here. One, user auth. This is actually used when we're authenticating a user, so a SIP user. SIP users can register with the platform, and Jambones delegates through a webhook the authentication of that user to you and you will get a message.auth request property that will have all of the information in the SIP uh, authorization header. It's up to you then to take that SIP username and domain, look up a password, and then indicate whether or not this user should be admitted. Most of that work, most of that heavy lifting is done for you by the user auth. All you really need to do is somewhere prior to calling it, look up 
the SIP, the user and the password, uh, sorry, the user and the SIP domain that you've got in the incoming webhook. Retrieve the associated password, which can either be plain text or if you prefer to store a hash password in your database for security, that's a good idea. And then just put that, either the plain text or the hash password in here. And that uh, will do the, the um, digest authentication and verify. All you need to do after that is then hook it up to a webhook. We'll look at an example of that in a second, but that's what the user auth node is for. Audio in is a kind of a special purpose. It, you can receive live audio feeds from Jambones. This is a node that implements a WebSocket server, receives that live audio, and actually uploads it to an S3 bucket. Um, Jambones has a REST API as well. So these uh, two no nodes at the bottom are for the REST API. One called LCC is to perform live call control. You can do things like mute or unmute a call or during a call, hang up a call, uh, start an entirely new application on a call. And create call launch is a new outbound call through um, the REST API. We'll look at those in a more advanced video in the future. Let me switch to uh, a running system that I've got and we'll um, create a simple application. And uh, before I do so, let's take a look at, here's an example of a webhook where I'm authentication, authenticating a user. So I've got a path of slash auth and then I'm doing something to look up the password um, given the SIP username and domain. And then I just call user auth and I'm putting that password which I wrote into a flow variable in there. And really that's all that's necessary to, to authenticate users. Um, but let's create a new application. Let's create it in the Jambones portal first. So we've only got one application. Let's create a simple SIP trunking application. So we give it as always the URL to the webhook. And we have a webhook for a call status as well. I'm going to use post for both. Um, at the application level, we can specify some defaults for language. So I'll just stick with Google English language. And we've added the application. Now we need, I'm going to trigger this application from my SIP phone. So we can register SIP phones at an account level. So on my account, I've defined a SIP domain, a SIP realm called jambones.us. And that's what my phone is going to register for. And when my phone attempts to make a call, I'm going to associate it with that application that we just created on Jambones. Now I need to actually implement that application over here on Node Red. So let's go to a new flow. Again, everything starts with a webhook in, ends with a webhook out. In this case, we're going to be doing a dial. Um, just for fun, let's say something beforehand. Oops. And we just uh, wire this all up. Um, I've got some choice here. So I can stick with the application default vendor, which is US, but if I wanted to, I can change this specific command to anything. Just for the fun of it, let's change it to uh, UK English. And then we're going to dial. I'm dialing a phone number. In this case, I'm going to dial on the mess. I'm going to take the that call property that I mentioned, which is going to come in from the webhook with a bunch of information, including the dialed number, and I'm just going to send the call out to that dialed number through my SIP trunking vendor. I've got a lot of other options I can do. Um, let's just maintain whatever I get on the caller ID in, which is going to come to me in that front property. I'll just maintain that on the, the outbound leg. That's all I'll, I'll do for now. We deploy the application. Oops, something that's not done yet. I did not configure the path. 
so that matches how I defined it in Jambones. Um, and now I've got an application. If I dial this, and I will dial my cell phone, we should receive the call. Using Jambones, please hold while we connect your call. With the English voice. Hello, hello. Okay. So that's the basics for setting up a very simple application in, in Node-RED using Jambones. It's just a matter of sort of laying out these nodes in the order that you want in between a webhook in and webhook out. Um, in future videos, we'll look at some more advanced types of applications, ways to put these together things like dialogue flow, speech recognition with gather, and so forth.